Chris, your host for the step-by-step -step tutorial. This tutorial will examine the spot healing tool, a hue saturation color adjustment for uneven skin tones, and we'll spend a bit of time doing dodging and burning to even out skin tones, and we'll do some shading and shaping with a curve adjustment layer plus layer mask. And finally, we'll use a subtle skin smoothing technique and add back some skin texture. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, here we are in Photoshop and we have our uh, image open up here. And uh, we obviously need to do some, uh, some work uh, to even out, uh, take out the blemishes. Um, so let's, let's start, we'll zoom in to 100% here and I'm gonna make an empty layer. This will be my spotting layer. And uh, we'll get the, the healing brush tool here. This is the spot healing tool, first selection here. And uh, basically, the approach here is just to use content aware, sample all layers, because we have a, an empty layer that we're, we're spotting into, and try to use the smallest brush you can to attack the little blemishes. We just take out anything that um, we want to remove. If it's a little bit bigger area, you can kind of paint over it. Um, so you can see I just go through and uh, sometimes you, you have to kind of go over it a couple of times to get the texture in there that you like. Um, again, if, uh, if it seems like it's getting too smooth, I don't think we're going to have that issue with this particular image. But uh, if you notice that things look a little too smooth, you can try create texture. And uh, again, sometimes proximity match may end up being a better uh, texture for you in this particular area. So we'll just keep going along through here. And uh, you know, sometimes you have to kind of hit it a couple of times before you get something that you like. And uh, we're, we're not going to be able to completely even out the color of the skin that's going to come in the next step so just want to kind of get rid of all that rough texture uh, as much of those little blemishes as we can um, right now i'm working at a hundred percent and sometimes you want to actually zoom in even more here i'm i'm at 200 percent and i'm just going to go for these little tiny little kind of, I guess that's sort of puddles of makeup here. Um, really, you get in this close, and this is not stuff that will show up in a print. But since we can, we will take care of them. Okay, and I'm not going to force you to watch all of this, but I'm just going to go through here and really just remove all the little spots that uh, are distracting. Okay, now that we've uh, done our spotting, we're going to take a look at this, and we still have we have some sort of uneven skin color, so a little blotchiness here that's uh, the result of the of the uh, sort of red acne uh, and using the spot healing tool we can't completely eliminate that and uh, uh, it, it the more we retouch the more uh, this kind of smoothing is going to happen we start losing some of the original texture of the skin so um, right now we're going to do a little bit of a hue saturation shift and i i do notice as i'm looking at the numbers up here for cmyk that her skin is in in a lot of areas it's really on the pink side and there's very few areas on here that aren't actually too pink however her hand over here is fine so the color of her hand which partially is because it's reflecting the yellow of her uh, blonde hair, but the color of her hand is is much better than the sort of overall red color of her face. So we're gonna just 
back out a little bit here. And now we're going to add a hue saturation adjustment that will start to even out the skin tone. Um, so we'll get a hue saturation adjustment layer here. And now I'm going to target the specific range of colors that I want to shift. So they're going to be reds. So we're going to target the reds. And as soon as I select reds from that drop down menu, I get these uh, eyedropper tools. So I'll take the leftmost eyedropper and I'm looking at the numbers. I'm going to try and find a red color in, in this one of the blemishes here that is especially uh, especially magenta. So again, looking up in the upper right corner of the info panel, I see here that magenta is at 50 and yellow is at 42. Uh, and that's the area right underneath my cursor. Uh, that is just way too pink. We need to have a little more yellow than we have magenta for a good skin tone. Uh, and this is also a color of kind of patchy blemish on her cheek. So we're going to sample that up. I'll just click on it. And I invite you now to watch the the gradient display at the bottom of the hue saturation adjustment panel. Uh, and it's going to move just a little bit. So you notice how that moved just a little bit. And that has centered uh, the targeted area right on that color. Uh, now we're going to subtract a, a good color skin here. So here we have a, a skin color that is about 10% higher. Again, looking in the upper right corner of the info panel there. Uh, that's a good skin color. We don't want to shift that at all. So I'm going to subtract that from the selection. And now just to make sure that uh, I know which colors are fully targeted, I'm going to do a ridiculous hue shift here. And we'll shift this all the way to the left. And you can see the cyan areas are the ones that are fully targeted. And I'm actually going to trim down uh, this selection here in the, in the bottom of the display. This gradient, this dark area represents the fully targeted color. And the light gray areas represent how it's ramping off. So the cyan is the fully targeted area. And it sort of ramps off. And it's having very little effect on the hand. Uh, but I want to make this targeted area just a little tighter to correspond more to the blotches that I remember seeing there. So something like this, I think, is, is going to be closer to what we want to shift. And then I'll trim in from the right side here. I'll just push this in a little bit until it comes off of her hair and a good part of her hand, which we don't want to shift. And so now you kind of see that the blue color is, is roughly corresponding to the red blotchiness uh, in her cheeks. Okay, So now we just bring this back to zero. And while I'm looking at this, I'm going to be shifting it to the right, which is in the direction that you want the skin color to move down here. If we want it to be yellower, so we've got to move that slider to the right. And OK, I'm getting I'm getting there. I'm getting to where I want to be with this. Uh, just a, a little more yellow than than magenta, maybe go a little bit more. OK, so that's really helped a lot to remove some of that uh, blotchiness. Now, the red blotchiness was also a little bit darker than the surrounding skin. So I'm going to attempt to kind of equalize it just a little bit. This is very hard. Uh, we're going to lighten it up just a little bit. If you go too far, it just ashes out, you know, it takes the color out of the out of the skin. So just a little bit to help uh, make the patchy areas a little bit lighter. OK, and so now we'll we'll uh, uh, we'll examine how this was before the adjustment. I'll just click the little eye on and off. So it's very red. And now I've taken the red out and we've gone a long way to hiding those those patches. Um, I think overall the skin has gotten a, maybe a little less saturated. Uh, we could try adding just a little more saturation back to kind of, you know, put some more color into the skin. Uh, just checking my numbers. I just want to make sure that I'm I have more yellow than magenta everywhere. And so far we're we're pretty good here. Now I can't use this 
adjustment globally. It's affecting the lips here, and it's also affecting the color of her, her shirt. So we're going to actually uh, paint it in or mask it so that it's only affecting the, the face, as we don't need it on the hand either. Okay, so I'm going to close the panel for now. We'll look at the layer. The layer, the adjustment layer always comes in with a layer mask. So right now I'm going to invert that layer mask so that it, it goes black. So Command or Control I will do the inversion. And it's also, you could go up here, Image, Adjustments, Invert. Okay, so we can do that. And now we're hiding the adjustment. So now you don't see the adjustment at all. And now we just take a, a paintbrush tool and we're going to paint with white into the black layer mask over the areas that we want to see that adjustment in. So I'm painting at 100% opacity just to paint in that adjustment. You can see the skin uh, gets yellows up and that pink cast is taken away. And that, that helps to hide the kind of red blotchiness a bit. Okay, and we'll go down on her neck here too, although frankly the neck now to me looks a little green and it's it's not bad technically in the numbers, but perhaps uh, we won't brush it in over the neck. We'll let that stay a little redder. Okay, so now just to make sure that we don't have any holes in our layer mask. I'm going to isolate the layer mask. I'll solo it by option or alt clicking on the layer mask thumbnail. And I can see just a few, oops, don't want to paint with black. Uh, we'll paint with white here. Just a few areas where the coverage wasn't quite even. Okay, and we can also, I'll show you another trick for this. I'll go back to seeing the full color image just by option or alt clicking again on that layer mask. And another way we can visualize that mask is to go to the channels panel and then turn on uh, the visibility of the layer mask. And we can kind of see now uh, how it relates to the face. And I might want to you know, carefully paint in so that I'm not covering up the lips, but I'm coming right up to it. And you know, also maybe a little bit down here on the chin. So I'm just getting a little more detail in the mask. And I have a nice soft edge there. We can come up under the eyes a bit more. So you can see how this, this helps to um, show you how the, the layer mask is relating to the image. Okay, I'm going to leave the area under her eyes a little more red and uh, just kind of feather into this a little bit. Anything that you've, if you think you've gone too far, I'm going to leave a little bit of redness into the shadows here, just a little bit. So now I've reduced the opacity, I'm going to paint back. Uh, with black just to hide it a little bit from the shadow side so that the shadows maintain just a little hint of that redness rather than uh, warming up uh, too much. If it's, if it's too yellow in the shadow, sometimes it looks kind of green. So I'm just wanting to keep it out of the shadows a little bit like I did on the neck down here. Okay, so now we'll turn that off. We'll go back to our normal view here. And so now you can see if I turn this on and off, it's only affecting her face. Okay. All right, so we're getting there. We're getting there. But uh, next, so this is uh, the hue saturation uh, adjustment to take the red out. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is do some subtle dodging and burning to help kind of even out. It's still a little sort of blotchy looking. Uh, and we can do little subtle things to kind of knock back the, the bags under the eyes just a little bit and uh, 
So we're going to make a dodge and burn layer. So I'm going to start by making an empty layer. This is going to be our dodge and burn. And we'll change the apply mode from normal to, um, to soft light. Now the trick here is if, if I paint into this layer with white or black, I can lighten if I paint with white or darken if I paint with black. The underlying image and it, it's it works well if you're if you're not going to try and go too far with it and when we're not we want to preserve as much of the actual real texture of the skin and we just want to kind of knock back some of these wrinkles and um, so the trick here is to use a brush at very low opacity so I'll, I'll and I'll just hit 05 to get 5% opacity um, I don't use flow to change the uh, the opacity. I'd rather use the, the opacity itself. Okay, and uh, to do this, really, you have to. This is very detailed kind of work, so it's really much more helpful to have a Wacom tablet. So we're going to switch to white, and uh, I'm going to zoom in now. We'll start with kind of more detail. So I get a nice little brush, and I'm just brushing in very subtly 5% opacity with the white and we're just lightening that little wrinkle just a little bit and our goal is not to remove it it's just to make it seem less deep okay And it should almost look like you're not doing anything. You shouldn't really, it's, it's happening so slowly that you're just not going to be aware of it. You just turn that on and off. You see how that really is lightening up? And now uh, I, I'm kind of